Five Live Boxing. So we might have just seen the fight of the year here at Wembley. Arta Betabiev stopping Anthony Yard in round eight. Unforgettable, bloody, savage quality. Boxing at its very best. I'm Steve Bunce and this is Five Live Boxing. It's that usual scene after a big fight at Wembley. The lights come on, the builders come out, the hard hats are nearly put on. I don't want to get in trouble. I got in trouble last time. They're taking the ring down. I've still got Richie Woodall here, who was working at ringside with me, alongside the commentator, Darren Fletcher. I'm going to come to you first, Fletch. There were moments in that fight when I wasn't sure you'd be able to continue. You, you seemed so excited, so engaged, and so sucked in by it, all you kept doing was looking over at me with a look of shock, shock and awe and amazement and wonder on your face. Do you know what? I said to Richie when it finished that I feel absolutely Exhausted. drained. <laughs> absolutely drained. You know what? Look, we all love top-level sport, whatever sport it is. And when you get the very best sporting occasion like we had tonight, there's nothing better. Yeah. And I think when we, we looked at this fight, we all knew what it could be. Yeah. And we all suggested what it could be. But it doesn't often turn out that way. And I think, you know, it's early in 2023, but we've already got a contender for fight of the year. I thought Anthony Yard was outstanding. Better BF showed his class. I mean, every punch that those two threw was hard. Mm. Everything thudded off the other fella. It ebbed and flowed. It was absolutely sensational. And I tell you what, I am absolutely shattered. <laughs> Rich, it seemed to me that... Every single second, Fletcher's talking about every punch. Well, I'll, I'll add to that. But every second was quality. If it wasn't better be a finding a little place for his feet, if it wasn't Anthony Yard sucking it up after being caught flush with his shot, if it wasn't one of them coming back from the sort of shot that's dropped loads of men, every single... There wasn't a wasted second in that. But it wasn't a wasted second in that fight. It was perfection. It was perfection. It was a, it was a, a classic fight in terms of the technique of both boxers was... was Exceptional, and it was there was re really good boxing skills that were shown from both boxers. But it had all that. It, it not only had that, Steve. It had the rough toughness yeah. of, of, a, of a real of a world championship fight as well. Both men had to really show their metal in there. Both men were hurt several times. It wasn't a case of uh, Anthony Yard. No, it wasn't the, stunned once. It no, was several. It was several, several times. times. So it was a great fight in terms of the skill, the technique of both boxers. But yes, it, you know, it, it was one of the one of the, one of the hardest fights. I've actually seen him witnessed to, to, to be ringside. It was one of the hardest fights that I've witnessed that was. And that's what I was going to say, because it was an incredibly hard fight. It was a brutal fight. And you saw that, Fletch, as you were giving almost a round-by-round round update on the changing facial features. I mean, one eye was coming up, one cheek was coming up, then there was a cut, then there was another cut, then there, was, there were more marks. And you, as you kept pointing out, look at them, look at them, look at them. Their faces told the story of that fight. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think Better Beer has ever had to dig as deep as he's had to Never. dig tonight. And I think that shows just how far Anthony Yard's come from the Kovalev fight a few years back, four and a half years. I think he's developed a lot since he lost to Lyndon Arthur on points. I think he, he grew from Absolutely. that defeat. And I tell you what, Absolutely. I've not watched it back yet. We're talking now, I've been kind of fresh in the mind, but we've just seen it from ringside. But I've, I've not got the chance to look at it back. And I'd be fascinating to know what effect those two rounds had on Anthony Yard. Two rounds that he dominated. Yeah. And then in the last 30 seconds, better be, I've turned him turned around him into his corner. own corner yeah. and smashed him to bits. I would suspect if you look at the judges' scorecards, there are two rounds that Anthony Yard won and he staggered back to his corner on both yeah. occasions. But Fletch, they left like like he'd, like he'd lost that, just showed, that just demonstrated the skill of the boxers because you, what you've just described there, it looked like Yard was going to win that round quite comfortable at one point. He, he was on top and yet the last 30 or 40 seconds, he makes one mistake, he falls short with a shot and better be have hit him with a cracking punch and the whole complexion of the round changed completely and you see Yard then hanging on at the end now that that's just not about uh, how rough and tough uh, uh, you are as a fighter that's that's dedication and skill of Better Beev in terms of his technique, of what he's learned, all through those Olympic days, Absolutely. Steve. All through those amateurs, all through the Europeans. The world. I mean, Brilliant. He, he turned them at one point in the corner, he turned them one way, and then in the next round, he turned them the other way. Yep. I mean, and, 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 and by the way, Yard, it wasn't, it wasn't like Yard had rushed in and fallen over nope. himself. So, so, so just, just to recap, OK, after a sensational first, second, third, fourth, fifth, fifth was unbelievable, sixth, seventh, it finished in the eighth round. 
Yard caught with a great shot, didn't go down, then caught on top of it, went down, and then turned the Ajayi stoppage. I just want to get this clear for the pair of you. Any problem with a stoppage, Rich? None whatsoever. You know what? That was a great decision by Tundi because Anthony, there wasn't real complaints from Anthony Yard. Yes, he would have gone on because he's a brave guy, but I'll tell you what, Fletch, we, we spoke about it afterwards. Yeah. Tundi probably saved him there from a brutal knockout because I think... Um, between, Better BF was just moving in, and Steven, he certainly saved him for, for some big shots there, Fletch. Listen, let's be honest, Better BF's one of the greatest finishers on yep. the planet, and there's no way that Anthony Yard was coming back from that. The point I'd just make before I go, because I know yeah. you're going to move it on, we were given the, the scorecards of the three judges. One judge had Anthony Yard 68 65, three rounds ahead. Wow. He was 66 65 up on another card. And Better Biev was only up on one. So Yard was ahead on two of the cards and he was up by three points on one of them. So you look how close he came tonight. Big moments, big situations, key moments in big sporting events changed the landscape. Yeah. And I think we saw it tonight, but he's going to come back. And we, we said it already. He's going to fight for a world title again. And I think he would have beaten pretty much anybody else on the planet tonight at yeah. his weight. And going back Apart for history, from and going back for history, lots of light heavyweights you would have beaten. Fletch, you get yourself off side, you put in a top a proper shift. They also know that in about four hours' time you're meant to be driving up to cover Wigan or someone. <laughs> I mean, no, no, trust me, he's going to work tomorrow morning. So it's nearly tomorrow morning now, so he's going to work in five hours okay. after a two hour drive home. Now yeah, you're but, watching your lad play football. Yeah, I'm going to drive right? my 14 year old son to Wigan to watch him play, so he better win, otherwise <laughs> I'm going to be fuming. But you can't not go because your role as a father means you've got to go. Got to go. So you've got to go, win or lose. Even if you get there and he stubbed his toe and he doesn't play you can't complain and i can't you're a dad and i can't come back until it finishes we've oh. had a great couple of days haven't we Fresh? brilliant absolutely sensational you know what it's a privilege to be at an event like this isn't oh, it and no. i think when you see a fight as good as that you can't beat it so richie that's fletch off and he's gone we're now we're now back in 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 uh, in the tunnel outside uh better behaves changing room. i just popped inside russ amber's in there the man that worked with you the man that we had in saudi Hopefully they'll be coming out in a second and we'll be able to grab a couple of words quickly with Better Biev. It's a little bit chaotic here. This always happens after a big fight. Sometimes things fall into place, other times they don't. So let's hope he comes out of that room in a second and we can grab hold of him. Yeah, that would be one hell of a bonus, Steve. But uh, yeah, let's just see if that can happen. Rich, whilst we're waiting, let's go through the fight. Let's go through the first round and, and the second round because they were tense. They were nip and tuck, to use well, a cliche. They were brutally hard as well. They were brutally hard, Steve. I actually thought that Better BF came out probably a little bit too confident. He was coming forward, yeah. looking to put it, really put it on Yard. And that, that I said in commentary, that, that that was allowing Yard to catch him with a few right hands. And it gave Yard a bit of confidence early on, although Yard was a little bit tentative because obviously he was in such against a formidable world champion. But I think Better BF came out a little bit too confident, coming forward. It's too that easily counter with that yeah. Lazy left and then one. he was getting caught with a left hook and, and Yard grew in confidence, especially in the second round. And things were going pretty well. But Steve, you know, as the, as the rounds went on, I said it in commentary that this type of contest, you're going to fight on instinct. Yes. Sometimes um, tactics are going to go out the window. You've just got to box what's in front tactics, of you. But, yes. But what's going to have to end up taking over at some point is instinct. And of course, attached to instinct is just guts and pure heart and exactly. desire. Exactly, because you've got to remember your opponent is going to chop and change his tactics. That's because that's why he's such a good fighter in terms of better be ever. He's a world champion, knocked all these opponents out, and he's prepared to chop and change. And you've got to go with the flow, yeah. and that's why you've got to box on instinct in that but type the, of a fight. But there were, there were definite moments there. There were definite moments there, Rich, when when when, when better be ever was pushed back or chose to go back. Yeah. Where in, in rounds, especially in rounds three and four, he, he might have won the rounds, but he was thinking you could almost you could almost sense his brain thinking saying hold on a minute this guy's taking great shots oh yeah this guy's still there and he's just and he's still catching me you know so what, about steve? at the end of about round four do you know what steve he was thinking he's probably thinking you know what this guy's better than what i thought he was yeah, yeah. because which, you could see it which which he's really it probably will not admit to 
But you're absolutely right. I bet you that's the case. He probably will not admit to that, but I'm, I'm with you. I'm convinced that's the case. That suddenly, going in around four or five, he's got uh, the cuts nearly coming up. His face is swollen. He's seen he's seen that the, the, the yards cut, but he's, he's unbowed. He's still taking good shots, and he's firing back you know, constantly. He's coming back with good counters. He's probably thinking, this guy's better than what I thought he was, and he's a tough cookie. Because yeah. let's face it, Baturbiev is such a ruthless puncher, a savage puncher, but yard rode the storms and at times you thought that Yard was going to stagger back but then he comes back he holds on he gets through it and then he catches better be with a shot but Steve as the contest went on and he'll learn from this so much Yard will because as the contest goes on Steve it now shows you that if you keep getting caught with big shots yes. It takes it out of you. Absolutely. And Yard was probably the fittest he's ever the been going into this fight. Is, doesn't matter. Your stamina is, doesn't matter. You get chopped down eventually. Yeah, it, it tires you out. Big shots, if you take them clean, they tire you out. And that's what's happened with Anthony Yard. And so as we're going into, I thought the seventh was, was brutal, the end of the seventh. We're going into the eighth. And I seem to think then, and talking to in the commentary with you and Fletch, thinking this is a pivotal round, a pivotal start. Then Yard gets caught with that perfect right hand, yeah. the right hand that's dropped every boxer that he's fought as a professional or as good as, and many of the dozens and dozens of the ones he's fought as an amateur. But Yard doesn't go down from the shot. He stumbles. His hands are flailing. He's hurt. Don't worry. He's but hurt. he doesn't go down from the best punch. One of the best punches. Yeah. Better be has ever thrown. Yard, Steve, you've got to give it to him. What a chin that man has got. Because, Incredible. you know, almost any other light heavyweight in the world might may not have stood up to those oh, punches yeah. t- tonight. Because Yard's that Yard was at the fittest he's ever been, I think. But my word, my God rather, he has got some chin, Anthony Yard. You've got to give him a lot of credit. Well, but eventually he took one too many where it just tired him out, Steve, and it eventually got to him. Yeah. But yes, tremendous effort. But to get to that point to get to that point to get to, the, to that point where he was ahead on two of the three scorecards going into the eighth he had to take the risk all the way through the yeah. fight because if he had been more sensible more cautious and boxed it in a slightly in a, in, in a slightly more controlled way he wouldn't have been in that position yeah. and Steve it's that simple what the fight showed us as well when you're boxing at this level at the very highest you can be winning a round but if you make a, a certain a silly mistake which you did occasionally the round can change on its head with with get, with better be ever or better be ever rather catching yard with a with a cracking shot after yard has actually made the mistake because you can't make mistakes against fighters like Better Be Ever. You get punished. Rich, listen, I've got a special... Don't, don't look around just yet. I've got a special <laughs> treat for you. It's not your birthday. It's not Christmas. <laughs> but I'm delivering for you, Russ Amber. He's Ru- my Ru- main Ru- man. Oh, Russ. Russ, Russ Amber's just you, walked out Just walked out of, of, of uh, Better Be Ever's corner. Um, I only came out with. for you guys. Just I, so yeah, you know. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, Thanks, that was, Russ. That was even better, harder, grimmer, more fantastic than I expected it to be. That was even better. The first thing I said to Mark during, while the fight was going on, I said, this guy was more resistant than all of the other opponents that better be fought. Combined. He, yeah, he, he took shots, and other guys have taken shots, but they haven't fought back no. the way he fought back. Marcus Brown took shots, yeah. but he kept crumbling and crumbling, yeah. didn't fight back. This guy fought back, man. And was Full dangerous. Credit Russ, to and it was we, dangerous. We've just yeah. made that point that when you take big shots, it tires you out. But fair play to Yard, he sort of rode the storm and he came back. He at tried. Better he Beer. sure tried. He sure did. And the pressure that Better Be have puts you on, he's got you in fifth gear when you only want to be in second at this point. He's got you in fifth early. In, 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 you know? the, fir- in the first two rounds, not a lot in them. Maybe you give them either way. It doesn't matter. But in those rounds, he was flat out Yard just to, just to be there. And and and, and Better Be have had that ability, as you say to put him into fifth gear when he could have only been fighting in second gear. That's class, that's quality. It is, and it makes you, as you would know, Rich, you know, you don't want to expend more energy than you have no. to, and better be it forces you to do that. So now he had to have his guts and his heart make him fight back, and he threw hard, mm. and he did his best to use his power to keep better be yeah. respectful, and he did. He yes. succeeded in doing that, you know, no doubt about it, but and, great performance. And Russ, what I admire about better be as well Technically, he's very, very good. He's a better boxer than, people than give what him credit people for. give yeah. him credit yeah. for. He's not just crash bang wallet. Yeah. This guy well, has got am- a great job. But you should know that. Yeah, as know. Am, of course, an amateur, but, but he did. You should absolutely. know that for but, sure. But, but, There's but, no but, doubt but, about but, it. Because yeah. as an amateur, he wasn't stopping everybody. He was stopping enough people. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But he was fighting those four twos. He's he was from a well-schooled through. program. He's from the Russian school of boxing. He's part of the old Soviet system. Don't worry about that. Very well-schooled. And the 
but, the, but the, it, the point we made as well, you can't afford to make mistakes against him. Because there was times when Yard was doing well, but he fell short with a shot. And, and then boom, boom, he's got yeah, you. Yeah. He's a class he's act, te- He's technically sound. He's not just a power puncher. No. Now, to what makes, it, 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 throughout boxing history, who have been the most dangerous yeah. fighters? The ones who had technique and power. Yes. They're the, were, they're the uh, most uh, dangerous uh, uh, of uh, all. The, the, one, the, one, the, the one thing that, 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 that I will say is that at least in the end, Arta was was absolutely honest enough to say, no, that was a good fight. That was a hard fight. Well, he knows it in there, Russ. Doesn't listen he? what he told. Listen what he told. Uh, he told Yard at the uh, when they came into the corner. He said, "How old are you? 28." He said, "Yeah." He says, "I turned pro when I was 29." He said, "You got a lot of time ahead of you." Oh, you know, that's so nice. yeah. He says, "You were very tough, tougher than I expected." He said that right to him right yeah, off the yeah, bat. Yard's got his respect. Yeah, 100. percent He got all of our respect. You know, uh, he really he didn't bad mouth. He didn't wasn't. Caught. He says, "I'm going to come do what I have to do on the night," and he did. Yes. There always has to be a winner and a loser, as you know. Yeah. But boy, he he went out on his shield on this one. Yes, did you did. expect Yard to, to give him such a hard fight, Russ? I expected stylistically. I expected it to be a hard fight, but I figured as soon as we nailed him, he's going to crumble. He's going to crumble. We're, we're we're a couple, of, but he didn't, and no. he kept fighting back. And I'm saying, so now we're going to the corner. Let's go back to the jab. <laughs> Let's go back to yeah. the jab. Yeah, you, you can know? see. Yeah. Well, Mark yeah. in the corner was saying to him, you know, that wasn't a good round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need a better round yeah, this yeah, time. Yeah. I need some more work this time. Yeah, and, we, and you were going, let's use the jab. Let's yeah, use the jab. That's right. I was, I'm watching. I'm, I can yeah. hear you guys. Yeah, the only thing I would say, if I had to say one one negative thing about uh, Arthur was just at times he would stand up a little too straight. And when you stand up yes. straight against a shorter opponent, yes. it's dangerous. It, as a tall guy, yeah. you know, the guys that hit you were the guys who got down low and were able to come over the top. Yeah. So that was the only thing I'd want him to be. At t- when, when he got down low, yeah. the, he put more distance between him and Yard, yes. and the jab was able to land better. So And, and Russ, yeah. what I admire about him as well, he's an all-round champion, but he's got a great chin himself, hasn't he? He does. Well, look at the Better shots be he took. A, yeah. Yeah. He's, oh, got he's a, been down. He's chinny. He's, he's been good. down in his career. He's got a good chin, yeah. man. Yeah. He, he took better shots tonight than the two punches that dropped him. Yeah, 100%. But those he was off balance. He's swinging and swinging at the same time. 100%. Absolutely. But how, Steve, 100%. There's no doubt about it. And he proved that he's a world-class guy. And he, he didn't, tonight was not the night he aged. Yeah. No, he still he still fights like a twenty eight year we old. Was, so. You know what we were talking about that we, we were saying that maybe tonight he's going to feel those thirty eight years. But and man, not not tonight he, he felt, felt, felt twenty eight years. Right. I'm going right. to tell the truth. We were hoping this would be the yeah, night. We not that we got anything against got, Arthur. No, know, but we know we we know we. we we You're know, Brits. We, we yeah, we're Brits. <laughs> we're Brits, man. <laughs> and we don't even... And listen, between the two of us, we don't even try and make out we're neutral. We like you. Yeah, yeah, we like yeah, Arthur. Right. We like Mark. But you want but the other guy to win. We want yeah. you to lose. Of course, of course, of course. Well, you didn't. Right, OK. Um, last week, Leon Swift, that was an unbelievable event. Huh? Unbelievable finish, an unbelievable event. Tonight, we've seen what could end up being one of the fights of the year here in a great event. We could I'm be. two for two in the UK, and my <laughs> snooker's better than ever today. This three two, weeks you, as well. You're two for two in the UK, <laughs> yeah. Russ. Yeah. But what a what an eight days it's been. What yeah. an eight days. It's it, been three it, weeks it, for it, me, Steve. But in any year, those two back-to-back fights in yeah. any year, of course, any year, any You'd be month, happy with. it's incredible. Yeah, and we got them back-to-back. Yeah. You like coming over here, Russ, don't you? I love coming over here, brother. <laughs> I love coming over here, and I, uh, I'll be back early March for Callum Smith. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Callum course. Smith is fighting in Liverpool, and so you're I'll gonna be come back, back again. That's so you'll come back then. We'll see yeah. you then. Then somewhere we'll be in Saudi, maybe in the Middle East I for, hope the, for so. the two for the two big lads. I hope they do the two big lads for sure. Two big lads. I'm very excited about that, and. You know, I think now I hope I hope Mark is able to get the the Sorry. Bivol fight. I hope yeah. I hope Mark can get them to get the Bivol fight because Richie, you know, when you become a champion, you want to fight champions. You don't Absolutely. just want to fight the contenders where no. you've got everything to lose no. and nothing to gain. You know, that's a no. as a fighter, you know what that means, right? Yeah. Yeah. You put everything on the line. You come to the guys you come, you come here. You defend. Russ, that, that can't happen anymore. Russ, there's, there's, there's nothing now. It, 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 it's, it's, everything is above that now. That, that, whoops, that cannot happen anymore. What do you mean it can't happen no, anymore? No, he, he, won't, he, he won't fight anybody unless it's a massive fight now. But there, he shouldn't. Be, like, look, he, he had to come here. He had to come here to the challenger's yeah. backyard, put his three belts on the line Russ, in the guy's hometown. That hometown. is now the biggest uh, fight in the division. It has it? to be. Yeah. We have to stop with this, you know, the split, the, split the titles and the champions don't want to fight each other. It has where, to come to an end. Where would you go, though? Where would you host that fight? 
Where would it say? Well, in fairness, if the stupid war didn't happen, Absolutely. if Putin didn't do what he did, can oh, you imagine right. how big that would have been? Two Russian uh, yeah, world yeah. champions fighting each other in Russia? But that's oh, not going to happen. Man. So anywhere else, so it doesn't matter. I mean, it's a... Nice you, it's the biggest fight, It's the it? biggest fight. You don't think that would be a big fight here in the UK? I think it, it would be they'd massive. Love it here, they'd think, love it yeah, here. Love 100, it. And it would be neutral territory for both. We'd you know, it's a Steve, perfect... We'd yeah. love it, son. Sure. Outdoors. 100%. 100%. Listen, Russ, it's always a pleasure. And a delight. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you for bringing this guy. I bring him for you. You bring him for me. That's the yeah, way yeah. it works. Yeah, yeah. Makes me feel old every time I see him, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely straightforward. Yeah. And, and Steve, I don't know if, if we're still on. Are we, st- are we still on? Yeah, we're still on. We're still I, on. You know, the, glove, the, gloves, that, the gloves that Arthur wore Big today, deal. the gloves that Arthur wore today are rival boxing right, gloves, as you know. Yeah, I, do, right? I do, I do indeed. So in the year 2000, when I started the company, I offered <laughs> Richie, you know, to have a piece of rival at that time. <laughs> He turned it down. That's right. <laughs> it's it one of my biggest regrets, <laughs> Russ. Any chance I can come in there? <laughs> I, miss, I miss the boat, oh, I? I miss the boat, Russ. Man. Oh, my man didn't want to support me at the time, and now look at this. Boy. I miss the boat, Russ. You did. So now you got to interview me. You see that? <laughs> no, it was good. It was great. It was a great night tonight, Richie. Good and night, I'm yes. glad you were here. Did you call it live on the, or did you just do this post-fight? No, did you, no I've, I've been commentating on call, the fight. Call, yes. Okay, good. Got that's good. Richie and Russ, listen, I'm going to leave you two with your bromance. I'm just going to stop you there because, Arta, can, we get, can I walk with you? Can I walk and talk? Thanks, Neil. Uh, Arta, um, first of all, congratulations. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I enjoyed it because, because of luck. Because you love to fight. Because of luck. Because you won. Because I'm lucky today, you know. You, you, listen, you are, you are lucky today. What was, let me ask you one simple question. Was he harder than you expected? You know, it's never you never know it's like how it's going, you know. But it's good. We win. That's it. Thank you very much, Arta. Thank you. Hugo Monia, it's that time of year again. It is the Six Nations, it's back, and it can only mean one thing. The Rugby Union Weekly becomes the Rugby Union Daily Podcast, and we're going to have to do it well because it's going to be a Six Nations anticipated like none before. Some of the big names on the pod, the usual crowd, Danny Kerr, Chris Ashton, but Sam Warburton is back, and many more big names. Yeah, John Barkley, Matt Dawson, Sarah Ultra, they're all going to be there, but whilst expectations are high, Jonesy, we've just got to keep it one pod at a time. That's the message from the head coaches and those head coaches will be on the pod as will some of the best players from across the Six Nations and will be daily podding from Monday the 30th of Jan. That is week one of the Six Nations. Yeah, get it in your ears. Listen to all of that and subscribe on BBC Sounds. Well said, Hugo. Now back to your podcast. Art has now made his way over to the top table, smiling. Um, I love the way he answers. I'm with a man that answers a little bit more directly but also and I'm going to ask him to tell me the story uh, Brad Jacobs of Top Rank Brad I'm going to ask you to tell me before we talk about Bivol and before we talk about all these I'll ask you to tell me that story about when you went to Russia in about literally 1897 we went, just when the wall collapsed to do a piece on their system tell me that story again because you were a senior producer if I'm not mistaken yeah tell I was me with the USA happened, Network Brad. at the time we had a series called USA Tuesday Night Fights and we were bringing over as, uh, about six Fighters for a Russian invasion. Yeah, and, I um, love that. Yeah, yeah careful good. with that one. That's right. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was it was different. Obviously, this is before uh, the walls came down and everything. But it was also before any Eastern Bloc champions. This, if I'm not mistaken. This is correct. So you were you were ground zero. Yeah, it, correct. And um, we didn't know, and we uh, got our visas for Moscow, and uh, then we went out to the training camp where the fighters were. It was only maybe 15 minutes from Moscow. And we're standing there, and all of a sudden, all these officers come in, see our papers, blah, blah, blah. And they said, you don't have visa for here. You've got to go and everything. <laughs> and then one of the trainers, like, brought the guy to the side and said, eh, they're okay. Oh, so, anyway. So, so that was back then. That was an awful long yeah, time ago. 89, F- yeah, yeah f- 89. So fast forward to 2023 inside this venerable arena here at Wembley. And I think... We've witnessed tonight something that will not leave us for a long time. Yeah. We witnessed something special tonight. And, and between us, I, I know the fights you, you've been at, and I know the fights I've been at, yeah. and some we've been at together. Yeah. 
that was that was that was unbelievable tonight. Yeah, no, that was a terrific fight. Look, I sort of expected a fight like that. I hope the, for yeah, a fight like exactly. that. Exactly, yeah, more like it. Yeah, I, I hope for a fight like that. And uh, incredibly, we we got that. And you know, all the fans are sitting around me with yard. They're all excited. I said, just give it a minute. You know, he'll, Don't worry. he'll get into his rhythm. May take a little longer than we expect. You know, but. Uh, in the end, look, I think you had two winners tonight. Yeah. The Yard wins by losing, Absolutely. and better be ever win. Yeah, and, and it's only in fights of that extremity where that happens. And you're right, tonight that definitely happened. Yeah. Two winners tonight. Yeah. Um, I've got to throw it forward because that's, that's the job I have to do. Um, everybody's talking Dimitri Bivol uh, for uh, Arta. Arta's talking about, as mentioned, Bivol himself. Is that a fight that can be arranged across promotional rivalries and channels and that type of stuff, Brad? I mean, because we're in a business at the moment where so much can't be arranged. Can that be arranged? Look, anytime there's a big enough fight to be made, the fights get made across networks, across promoters, everybody. We figure a way to get it done. Yeah. So it could happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and tonight I saw Arta there, um, and I saw him after the fight. He's marked up. I know he gets marked up right. occasionally, but he knew without a doubt that he'd had a real test tonight, a real, pu a real push tonight. Yeah, no question. Look, I give it all credit to his trainer. He knows his man. He knows when he's had enough, mm -hmm. and better uh, too early than too late. And finally... Um, I'm not even going to ask about Usyk and uh, Fury because it happens just all the time. <laughs> and I'm not going to talk about Jake Paul and, <laughs> and Tommy Fury, which is the conference yeah. being set up 30 feet from where we are. Uh, but hopefully we'll be back together again uh, in the Middle East soon, yeah, you and I. Who knows? Or April. Florida or... Uh, I was in Florida, you know, for that oh, mad fight last year. No, 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 no. Listen, I keep, I keep thinking you live in Vegas. I think everyone lives... But I know you don't. I know you live in Florida. Yeah. But I was there for that Daniel Dubois fight. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Last, I was there for that Daniel Dubois fight last year. And... Um, it was in an airport hotel, and it was during some Horrible. floods, and no one told me it rained for 25 hours a day right. in June. It was the most miserable six days I've ever had anywhere in my life. Yeah, that's, that's a terrible you know venue. I, mean? I know, exactly. it's right by the Venues airport. Yeah. yeah, it's a horrible venue. Listen, Brad, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Yeah. Give my best to Bob, and I'll yeah, see you in a couple you. of weeks' time. Look Thanks forward so much. to it. Thank Thanks. you. Uh, Rich, uh, sorry for dropping you out there. It was just a bit stretched. We've been moved away and we've got to be quiet. Um, there, there, it looks like Tommy Fury's left the building, but Jake Paul is holding yeah. call. Uh, it was announced in the ring. It was fairly lively. There was lots of yeah. pantomime and shenanigans. Um, what's your thoughts and feelings on, on, on this fight? Because I, 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 I have some strong feelings on it. What are your thoughts and feelings on it? Well, Steve, my Saudi Arabia, feelings, by the way, on yeah. February the 26th. Yeah, that's my, a my Sunday. My thoughts and feelings about the fight itself. Um, I always thought that... Um, Tommy would win the fight but since then um, I've looked at J Jake Paul and he's better than what I thought he he's was better than he was 18 months ago yeah, that's, he's a, what, he's that's better, what he said he's, when he's, I spoke to him yeah, exactly he's a better but Steve I still think that when, when push comes to shove when it's nitty gritty in the ring I think that Tommy will come through and win the fight I've okay. always said it I think because the boxing background is, is it's, it's his heritage isn't it yeah, okay. it's, fa it's a family business and I think that fighter instinct in him will come through and I, I see him beating Jake I Paul the, the, one, the one thing it is and, and, and I'm going to paraphrase what George Warren, uh, the promoter, said tonight. He said, if this was about, if we were putting this on tonight with a guy with eight and zero and nine and zero, whatever they are, it would be just a really good eight rounder. And he said, that's what it is, a really good eight rounder, but with two guys who are incredibly popular, which is why they can draw and get the attention they get, and which is why they're making what they make because I'm sick of people fight professionals going oh I'll knock him out of course you will you're a fighter exactly, yeah. you've been at yeah, the X or the Y you've done yeah. this these two aren't they're just two raw novices yeah. and I think it's going to be a great eight round bang up and it's not me trying to sell it I just think it's going to be a great eight round bang up I totally agree with you, Steve. I think it's going to be a cracking fight. Um, like I said, Jake Paul, I think he's better than what people give him credit for. He's better than what I thought he was, and I've looked at him Absolutely. in more when detail. Absolutely. look closely. Look closely. I think it's a, it's a, it's a good fight. It's, it's, it'll, I think it'll be a hard fight, but I still see Tommy coming through because that fighter in him, for me, will, will get him the victory. Could you do 30 seconds for BBC, Jake? We, we okay? J J Jake, listen, thanks, thanks for giving me a couple of seconds of your time. Um, at last. At last it's on. Yeah, thank God he's going to get into the ring, hopefully. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment, man, and uh, it's going to be a good one. He talks a lot of smack, and so do I. So there's a lot on the line. His, his family's going to disown him if he loses. So uh, so much pressure on him. Yeah, a lot of, lot of pressure. A lot of pressure on me, too, because, you know, I, I'm, you know, 
a lot of people want my head. And so um, I got to win. I always got to win. You and I first sat down to talk about this in that hotel in Vegas in September two, two, or whatever it was, October tw- uh, 2021. You're a better fighter now, as a question, yep. than you, than you, you're a better fighter now than you were then. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. I've, I've drastically improved um, and continue to make adjustments in sparring all the time, becoming a better athlete and coming into my athletic prime, you know, as I'm 26 now. So, you know, by the time I'm 28, I'm going to be a, a beast. So. And Jay, I was in Miami in June and I was at the Fifth Street gym and there was a couple of Cuban guys there and they were talking to me and they heard me mention your name and they started talking in Spanish to each other. Then it turns out, listen, you're a very slippery man because it turns out you'd had them at your sparring camp in Puerto Rico. Okay, so so all this Jake Jake Paul trains it, you know, you know, in his garden, swims around and has a little play around. You had two really good Cuban fighters out there sparring with you and training with you. Always. This is like a secret, isn't it? Always. Don't always. tell anyone. Always. I always have really tough sparring partners in camp, world champions. Uh, I've been in there with, with some of the best people in the world, and uh, that's how you get better. So I've always pushed myself. I've never taken it easy. My coaches never take it easy on me, and I've sparred hundreds of people over the past three years. It's my three-year anniversary um, of being a pro. Uh, yeah, I fought Gibb three years ago tomorrow but yeah and just finally just finally thanks for your time i've gone way over what i said i would do uh, how, what did you think of this tonight what did you what did you think of, of yard against better bf man I, I thought it was a war i thought yard showed a lot of heart um but better bf's pressure is just relentless thank so, you very much yes. jake thank you very much well, that's enough, Jake Paul and Tommy Fury. That fight takes place on Sunday, the February the 26th in, in Riyadh, in South... Uh, in fact, in Diriyadh, same place you went for Joshua against Andy Ruiz, out, yep. out in the desert. Anyway, that's, that, that's neither here nor there. That will happen. Uh, maybe we'll be there. Who knows, Rich? Stranger things happen. Let's just sum up what we've seen here tonight at this grand old venue, the old Empire Paul, the Wembley Arena. We've seen something special tonight. Ended in the eighth round with Anthony Yard being saved by his corner of a fight that he was ahead on two of the three scorecards, but he was in danger of being of being properly stopped at that point. Yes. What are your, what's, what, what's your final thoughts on what we've seen tonight? Because it was a terrific fight. It was a great fight, Rich. It was a terrific contest. And um, yes, the favourite has won. I always said straight away it was a 60-40 fight for, for the champion. Uh, better BF but I had a, a sneaky feeling Steve on paper it was 64 so I had a sneaky feeling that Anthony Yard could win it tonight he's in his prime and I think you know some people said to me the fight's going to be go it'll be quick but better BF will, will win this contest quick <clears throat> excuse me I said you no, see that, no you fancied, you fancied I, longer fight all absolutely because yeah, both, la- both boxers are in peak yeah. condition and when you're in peak condition you can take good shots and you can recover Great and I think at the end of the day it was a fight that demonstrated not only the power punches but skill yeah. passion everything that um, you need as a skillful fighter and it, it, for me it demonstrated dedication in both the training camps and what they've done in, in getting to this stage how fit they were it was a tremendous battle it really was but I, like I say it was one of those type of fights where if you made a mistake you got punished Anthony Yard will learn again so much from this fight I don't think it's the end of the road for him no. I think one day he's good enough he's good enough to be a world champion and I think he will be a world yeah. champion I, the next I fight obviously for, for the main man better be ever is is, is Bivol mm. but you know yourself Steve when you get an undisputed champion then then everyone's saying you've got to, you've got to fight a man you've got to fight four mandatories mate yeah. and so what do they That's do the they, they, they release they release one of the they vacate one of the titles and who knows Anthony Yard could be fighting again for a world title but answering your question it was a fantastic contest all round and Richie you've been a fantastic um, mm. fantastic uh, partner here all round we've been in tunnels backstage we've, we've, we've managed to speak to all sorts of different people we've spoken to Jake Paul we've spoken to Arta Better Biev we spoke to Darren Fletcher We've done our bit. We've floated around. We spoke to, to Brad Jacobs from Top Rank, a man that's been around the globe. That's the end from Wembley. What an event it's been. What a start to the year. What a first month to launch any year in history. Next week, I'm going on the road. I'm in New York City, Madison Square Garden again. The basement, close your eyes and I'll tell you who's going to be there. Amanda Serrano fighting for four belts. Alicia Bumgardner. She's a great champion and a good talker. You know what? She's done commentary with us. She's part of the team almost. And also Sky Nicholson on the bill. 
Bunsey in New York on five live duty. Couple of pods from there. What a time to be in the boxing business on both sides of the ropes, on the safe side and on the dangerous side. This has been Five Live Boxing with me and for a lot of tonight, Richie Woodall. But for me, Steve Bunce, enjoy your week. See you in New York, people. Let's get ready to rumble. Five Live Boxing.